It's time to get creepy. In this lab on reconnaissance, we're going to learn about the power of harnessing social media sites for information gathering. We're going to use a tool called Creepy. It's an open source intelligence tool that gathers geolocation information from a variety of social networking platforms, including Twitter, Flickr, Instagram, and Google+. Creepy gives us the ability to gather all the information from all of these social networking sites, present them in a graphical format on a map, and allow us to search that based on location or date. This allows us to create what we like to call a pattern of life, where we'll determine what our target was doing, when they were doing it, and where they were doing it. You might wonder why I need to know all of this information. Well, part of a hack sometimes comes down to having physical access to the facility. And if we need to gain physical access, we're going to really need to know when our victim is and isn't at home. Creepy allows us to build that pattern of life to determine the best time to conduct our attack. Creepy is available for Linux, Windows, and Macintosh systems. Creepy used to be loaded by default in Kali, but the latest version you actually have to download and install it yourself. We're going to walk through that in a minute since we're all going to be using Kali as our attack platform, but you can also download and install this to your Windows or Mac machine if you want instead. Since Creepy does require internet access, we're going to reconfigure our network adapter on our Kali Linux virtual machine. If your virtual machines aren't already open, you're going to need to open VirtualBox at this time. From the VirtualBox Manager, we're going to select our Kali machine, and then we're going to click on Network. From here, we're going to select our internal network, which prevented us from reaching the internet, and making it go to NAT. This stands for Network Address Translation, and will actually allow the virtual machine to use the network adapter of your host machine. And then select OK. At this point, we're going to power on our Kali machine, and we'll have internet access. To begin to install Creepy, we're going to open the terminal. We're going to use pip to do the installation, but first, we're going to upgrade pip. So do pip install upgrade pip. Next, we're going to install Creepy. To install Creepy, we're going to do pip install dash u pytz python qt flickr api python instagram yapsy tweepy google api python client python date util config object and dominate. Next, we're going to need to download the Creepy software itself. So next we're going to open up Firefox and go to github.com slash jkakabas slash creepy slash tarball slash master to download the source code. And then we'll save the file. It's going to go into the downloads folder. And from here we're going to unzip the tarball by using tar-xvz and then the name of the file. You'll see that now we have a folder for that, so we'll go into that folder. Next we're going to go into the creepy folder. And from here we're going to run creepy main by doing python creepy main.py. Now from here before it will work, we're going to have to set it up with our particular social media accounts. So we're going to go up to creepy and then go to Edit, Plugin Configuration. And from here, we're going to run the Configuration Wizard. For our example, I'm just going to use Twitter. Click on Next. And then Authorize the app. You'll need this pin, type it in the bottom. And then click Finish. And now our Twitter is going to be set up. You do the same thing for Flickr, Google+, and Instagram. Now if you want to make sure it works, you can try the test plugin configuration. And it will tell you if it's able to reach Twitter through the API. And then hit OK. So now at this point we're going to create a new project which is going to be set on our target set. So I'm going to go to Creepy and go to New Project. I'm going to do a person-based project. I'm going to give it a name. In my case, and you can follow along, we're going to use Titan Cipher, T-I-T-A-N-C-I-P-H-E-R. It's a website that I own. 
uh, as well as a uh, Twitter handle that I have that I use for hacking competitions, and I've dropped some hints there for us to play with in this example. Some keywords we're going to use are things like Titan Cipher, both with spaces and without, and then things like um, hacking or anything else that has to do with that company. In this case, Titan Cipher is a hacking handle, so I'm going to throw that in there. And then for a description, this is just for your notes for later. I'm going to do person based project for Titan Cipher. And then we will hit next. What are we going to search for? Well, I'm going to search for Twitter. And I'm going to search for their username, in this case, Titan Cipher. Now, you can just go to twitter.com slash Titan Cipher and you'll be able to find them. But I want to look for them. I can look for them by email address, their full name, their ID, their username, anything of that nature. And I'm going to search, I can search across all those platforms. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and search. And I did find one that is a Twitter based one that is Titan Cipher. So I'm going to add him to my targets. And then at this point, I'm going to click on next. I can look at things that he's retweeted. I can exclude replies. In my case, I'm going to leave the replies on because I want to find as much information as possible. And then I'm going to hit next. And then finish. So you're going to click on analyze current project and you'll be able to find everything that this person has done. So I'm going to zoom out. And I see that there's some stuff here in Glen Burnie. There's some stuff here in Fort Meade, both of these being in Maryland. Only have a couple tweets there. You see there's two. There was some up here in the New York, New Jersey area. If I zoom out, I'll see some that are in Colorado. And you'll see there's a big pocket here in what looks like Hawaii. So we can pick any of these to look at. And we can actually search based on location if there's something we we're interested. For instance, if it was a company's headquarters, we might look at that for a location to find out what tweets across the internet have been done at that particular company's headquarters. And so any employee who's tweeted with their geolocation on, we can start creating patterns of life on that. In my case, I'm going after a person's pattern of life. Now if I roll over to the side here, you can see we can scroll this date back a little bit. You can see that we had Fort Meade, Maryland, New York Liberty International Airport, Pearl City, which is in Hawaii, Lai, Honolulu, 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 lots of tweets in Honolulu, um, a hotel in Honolulu, Colorado, again an airport, and then Baltimore, Washington. And if you look at the times, you can see when these happened. This was early November, and then going up it got later and later as the days went on that the person was tweeting. So in our case, let's go ahead and open up Newark International. So in this case, we had a tweet that said, can you guess my flight number? Now if we pull up this person's actual tweet, if we click on the tweet, we can see where the original tweet was. And the question was, can you guess my flight number? So let's click on their tweet. It will open up with our web browser. And we can see the person was waiting to board a plane. So we have two pieces of information. We have their gate numbers, C114 and C115. We have also, there's a United sign here, so maybe it's a United flight, makes sense. And then we also know when they tweeted this, which was 17 November 2016 at 3.56 a.m. So, do you think we could start Googling around and figure out what this person's flight number was? Well, they're probably either at C114 or C115. So we seem to have a lot of Honolulu tweets. So we can see that they're sort of in a downtown area, and we can start looking at what buildings are around there, what times of day. So as this person would move around and have different tweets, maybe they ate lunch every day at this building over here, but they worked in this building over here. We can start figuring out that time of day and the way that the person does. Now, the thing you have to be a little bit careful with with this geolocation is it does it based off cell phones. So in the case of this person, if we zoom out, you can see that they're kind of on the side of this mountain ridge here, which is actually the uh, one of the craters in, Ho in Honolulu. And the downtown area is over here, and there's some tweets over here as well. In this case, this person may be tweeting from anywhere in this area. And the reason why is the cell phone tower that does the location, there's a lot of cell phone towers up on the ridge of this mountain, so that can actually throw things off for us. So if we look down here, we have a status. Uh, do you have any idea where I'm staying this time around? If we click on that, we can look at the actual status itself. 
and we can start getting clues. There's this waterfall, which is probably something that we can see. There's this tower number. And then, of course, they even translated it for us into what the actual property is, which is the Aston Waikiki Banyan. Now, using this information to create a pattern of life is helpful. Let's assume that this person that we're targeting lives in Washington, D.C., but we're now seeing that they're tweeting from a place like Hawaii. If we need to gain physical access to their office, this might be a good time to conduct that attack, right? Of course it is, because now they're halfway across the world. They're less likely to catch us. What if instead we developed a pattern of life showing that the office staff tended to take lunch every day between 12 and 1? Well, this might be the best time for us to conduct an attack because there's less people in the office and less staff means less eyes looking for us. This is a good time to break in. These are the type of things that we're going to piece together using a program like Creepy. It helps us give one piece of information and we add another piece and another little bit here and a bit there until we put all these bits together to create this fuller picture of the situation. Now Creepy only gives us the information on people and locations, not a whole lot about the network itself. Next, we're going to begin using open source intelligence on the network itself so that we can gather the information we need for our attack. After all, the reconnaissance phase is where we're going to spend 80% of our time. Preparation is key to the successful hack.